everybody. There you go. Hey, Welcome. guys. <laughs> Welcome back to a new video. The, are it's you still friendly, in the... <laughs> small-brained American. Now joined by our small-brained Australian. <laughs> the small-brained collab of the year. <laughs> I'm, I'm recruiting all across the world. <laughs> are you still in uh, Bangkok? Yeah, same, same old place. No, I'm I thought you went a few days though. Oh, I thought you went to uh, Sri Lanka. No, when we first called, I had just come back from Sri Lanka. Oh, I got you. It was like, yeah. and I, I was in Bangkok from that. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. What have you been doing in uh, in Thailand then? I was just chilling, you know, with the lady boys and <laughs> no, yeah. um, getting sucked get, off. It's good, it's, it, yeah, yeah, man, <laughs> that's my favorite thing to do, um, especially by men. <laughs> Honestly, who else would do it better? You know. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we know what needs to be done, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dude. Did you uh, no, did you dip um, your toe in? I know Harry uh, made a video lately about his yeah. experience. No, uh, he, he's he's pretty into it. So I'll let him do all the experimentation, <laughs> and I'll let him recount it back to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but here I'm just chilling. It's a good place to um, get stuff done, like. It's convenient. The facilities, the quality of life is good. Thai people, Thai food is nice. Um, and it's a good kind of jumping spot between different countries. You know, center of Southeast Asia. I'm basically a flight, one flight away from everywhere. Yeah, and they have a huge airport. It's like so busy. Yeah, it's great. They got two huge ones. Like, it's crazy. Like, it's so welcome. Like, Bangkok, I mean, it's the one thing i hate about it is the traffic like traffic is awful it's but like so it's bad. so well like to some extent planned out like they got like six or seven metro lines like they got so much public transport it's super easy to get to the airport just hop on one of the lines and stuff and then you're good to go yeah it's one of those places that's like really surprising with how easy it is to get around it's almost like it kind of reminded me of columbia honestly like all the all the sinning you can do there plus like nice public transit like friendly people um it's like one of those places that's really surprising where you're like oh shit like i thought you know like ignorant american i figured it'd be just like a poor ass third world country but then you go like oh my god actually like Wait, isn't that what you guys are... think about every country hell yeah brother <laughs> <laughs> you're goddamn right <laughs> didn't you have a lot of uh, americans in your because you had like a food poisoning video you posted lately and people were trying to give you pointers yeah you Americans, you know everything. Like, I mean, it's, it's hard to argue with you guys. Greatest country on earth. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. That video was so polarizing. Like, because I honestly posted it. I didn't even think it was going to be controversial at all. This is how I drank a Bangladeshi street drink and got the worst food poisoning of my life. Oh, was that fresh sugar cane? Salam alaikum. This is like safe. I, don't, so, I, I wouldn't. I don't know. Really? Yeah, yeah. I, don't know. I think I have like a pretty good gauge in terms of controversial content. Like, I know when I post something, if it's going to hit a specific audience and then initially like, the first few million views it got was all like indian people being very angry because i was like saying that india is like dirty and india is safe and you can't drink the water there like people take captions like so literal i was like the caption said i i was told before i visited india not to drink the water and then everyone was like oh what so you think people aren't drinking water you think we're we're drown <laughs> um we're like freaking what the fuck's the word like not, not drinking water. Yeah, we're dehydrating ourselves. <laughs> like, really? Um, and then eventually the algorithm like transitioned to get a bunch of like Americans in there basically kind of like hitting their um, perception kind of of India, like with the dirty street food and stuff like that. And then there's like everyone's yeah. fighting the comments as they are. Bit of a shit welcome, show. Welcome to my corner of the internet, Luke. That's where... Uh, <laughs> I've apparently so gained all my tracks. <laughs> yeah, it's like triggered Indians and then like xenophobic Americans just like battling it out. It's like some <laughs> fucked up war scene. Like it's uh yeah, it's an ugly place to be. It's like yeah, well, especially that's why just, that, the, your most viral video. Like that's exactly it. Yeah, it's crazy. I know you sent me that video where the dude was like, uh, what was even the video you said? Because a, a few video, a few people have sent me the same video where it's like this guy calling me a racist or something for going and saying India was dirty. What did you watch it or? Yeah, I did actually watch it. Well, the, the title is um, the most honest travel vlogger is actually a racist or something like that. And honestly, the video nice. wasn't too bad, but it's so crazy how people switch things 
and use parts of your, like this is just in general but use a specific part of a video to act as if it's a good part because you remember that guy that you saw in Varanasi where he had USA on his shirt like mm-hmm. one of them were like following you for ages trying to get you into that tuk tuk he only yeah. showed like you shaking his hand and saying like all oh, these people were like greeting him and stuff like that I'm like bro I watched the video like you got followed like for 10 minutes before that <laughs> <laughs> Um, but the whole video yeah. was a bit of a hit piece. Uh, on yeah, the, that's And fair. the comments, like, her comments were, like, 50-50. Like, the comments, honestly, were, like, pretty much exactly what your actual video comments were. Like, either people agreeing with you or absolutely hating you. But, like, yeah, it's crazy. I don't know, like, obviously everyone's entitled to their own opinion and he's within his right to make that video. I just don't agree with uh, a lot of the things that were made there. Yeah. Do you watch... But I do know that you're 100%, you're 100% a racist. <laughs> I mean that's a given, you know. <laughs> do you watch uh do you like pay attention to what people are saying cuz it looked like after you posted that video of the India uh TikTok where you're talking about getting food poisoning um you like responded to a lot of the people so I didn't know if you like got off on just like pushing people's buttons or if you're no. if, it, if it bothers you or No, like I mean hate I don't think I respond hatefully. Like, sometimes I just take the piss out of people. It's like, oh, like, how do you know <laughs> if it's... Oh, actually, no, there were a few comments. Like, they're just stupid ones. I just like to make fun of them. It's like some like some guy said, you it was you either have a weak stomach or it was bad. It was a bad drink. I'm like, yeah, fucking no shit. Like, what, what, other, what other option is there? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, like, I kind of like just like stupid stuff. Like, I read through comments, like, Instagram and, like, TikTok and, and stuff like that. It doesn't really bother me because it's all, like, new viewers that just see something and they comment. It's more like, like, YouTube long format, people that have watched my videos for a long while. If I, like, get kind of criticism or constructive criticism there, I'll be like, okay, like, you know, you've probably like actually watched a fair few of my videos. You actually understand a little bit. You actually have some, like, sense to um, comment on the matter. But, like, short form content, it's just, a, especially shorts, TikTok, it's just a breeding ground for incels yeah honestly yeah it's just crazy the amount of people that are like oh well you didn't think about this or you know like my india sucks video. it's like a 10 minute you know 13 minute whatever video where i'm just like it's dirty i don't like it the people are really pushy to me it's like and then people are like oh well they were a british colony and and oh well it's like this because of this i'm like yeah like okay that's fine but like i'm not a fucking it's not nat geo bro like i'm not gonna <laughs> it's like when you're on tiktok like your tiktok video it's like you're not gonna <laughs> It's a fucking like 30 second video. You're not going to stop and be like, well, you get food poisoning for these reasons. And, you know, India is blah, blah, blah. It's like, it's not a fucking. Yeah. It's not a big, it's not that deep. You know what I mean? Bro, I just went traveling, bro. And I had a camera like chill. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's weird. Well, anyways, yeah, I wanted to like get you on here because I feel like you kind of like got to interview me. So I feel like I want to, you know, ask you some questions now. Yeah, yeah, ask me, ask me some questions. Well, last time we spoke was a lot, um, a lot more one-sided. I was spitting all the questions, asking all the, uh, the how you started, how you how you came up, but um, th- yeah. throw it back. Throw it and back. you were making me uh, give away all my secrets. Yeah. You know? Yeah, bro. Well, you you, no. you published them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, to make you know fifteen dollars on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> how did you um? You said you started filming when you were eighteen, right? Like, I uploaded my first video, I think, when I was, like, 10. Um, actually, maybe I mentioned this in our, our previous yeah, yeah. chat. But, yeah, like, like, it was just some, like, shitty video of me making, like, a, a spear gun out of a straw and an elastic band, and I posted it. And then ended up getting, like, 30,000 views. I forgot about it for ages. But the only reason I saw that it had 30,000 views is because I was actually going to go delete the video because the kids at school found it and were <laughs> mocking me and bullying me for being a YouTuber or something, even mm-hmm. everyone's dream especially my age, was to um, to make YouTube videos. Um, so, like, even, like, the kids at school and stuff, we'd, like, muck around and just, like, play, like, film videos, like, do, like, Bear grill impersonations, like, at the time. Or, like, yeah. some big... Like, I'm talking, like, early YouTube. Like, my age, I'm 23, like, born in 2000. Like, my age group was, like, were the ones that were consumed by YouTube. Like, the OG days of, like... Um, like Ray William Johnson and stuff like they're like the OGs. Mm. Um, so I, was, I just grew up on YouTube. So I was like the first generation of wanting to become a YouTuber. And then I filmed a little bit, made, made shitty videos in, in primary school. And then, um, 
then at the end of high school when I actually like was like okay I can actually like choose a career like what do I want to do started making just like daily vlogs um in Sydney Australia and they were awful and then what did you do traveling for just like degenerate stuff just like I installed this like PA system in my car so I could like speak to people so I'd be like driving around my friend would be filming me and I'd just be like <laughs> just yelling at people and stuff like that like oh like like prank them. shit like real yeah, real YouTube yeah, yeah, shit yeah um <laughs> like I, <laughs> I had this like Olaf um costume like big big Olaf costume you know Olaf the Disney yeah from even, Frozen you know? or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. So I dressed up as Olaf and I cr- printed out like a fake Olaf license. And I went to like a liquor store dressed as Olaf for <laughs> like alcohol. <laughs> That's pretty store. good. Did you get it? <laughs> yeah, bro. The guy like sold it to me. And I was like, I, I, I no. only just turned 18. So like I was legally allowed to, to buy alcohol. But he just like sold it to me. It was, it was insane. You filmed so the whole crazy. thing? Yeah, yeah. It's not up anymore because wow. like all those degenerate videos are. That's actually probably a pretty good one. I should go through all those videos. I don't know that if they're private fire. or if they're completely um, destroyed. But yeah, I was like, you know, all those just, just stupid stuff. And then when I started traveling, just <laughs> not did the same thing traveling, but just enjoyed kind of traveling and eating food and filming it and learning along the way. Damn. So you started like prank YouTube. What what happened with uh, with the guy that sold you the liquor? I did, I'm sure he's like in some trouble. <laughs> the video had like 500 <laughs> views probably <laughs> like no one, no one knows Christ. about it <laughs> yeah well it could be like your other video where you wake up and it has like 300,000 and then he's out of a job dude he goes to jail <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly honestly I'm, I'm, I, yeah, I, I don't know how that's actually, if I do upload again I need to blur blur him out <laughs> but, um, just ruining yeah, his but man's also, life but also like the, the, the <laughs> video it was just so awful. Like I might have just been I don't even know how I was recording audio. I had my friend like in the back of the, the wine store just like f- filming like awkwardly, like as people were coming <laughs> in. Just like just the quality like cause you know, you don't like if you're doing if you're like a big YouTube channel and you're doing pranks and stuff like that, you have like you go all in, you have the big cameras, you just like don't give a fuck what anyone really thinks. But obviously like early on you're like, Oh fuck. Yeah. <laughs> For sure, especially with that prank shit. I feel like, because I mean, I felt self-conscious like pulling out my camera like in Thailand when no one understands you and I'm filming on a phone, but I can't imagine like in a liquor store film. I mean, they don't even (laughs) like you filming to begin with and you're like fucking with them. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't even know how. I think maybe I was drunk when I did it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you got to bring these back, dude. Put them on like a, I don't know, like a paywall or something. I'd I'd pay for that. It's like some Logan Paul shit, bro. That's some like. Well, I think that, I think that's actually like. Well, I mean, this is when I was eighteen, so this is like twenty eighteen. So this is when like probably Logan Paul and all that were doing um, that kind of stuff. And I used to watch Logan back in the day, um, so yeah. I think I probably was inspired by him and that whole crowd of um, at that time of the year. Yeah, that's fair. So did you? So you were like filming people breaking the law, you know, making poor. Pakistani immigrants lose their jobs, and then after that, you uh, you left for traveling. You just like fucking, you're like, how did you? Well, you graduated high school and you just left, or what? Yeah, but like I finished high school and then worked for like six months, saved money, like every like, and then like I was always gonna go on a gap year, which is like super common in Australia at least, and just go travel, like you know, like I think I had like fifteen or like ten or ten thousand dollars saved up, and I was like, okay, well, like if I just eat shit and stay in cheap accommodation like this can last me like a year year or two and then mm-hmm. if if shit hits the fan i don't make money from youtube then i'll just go work again <laughs> do but it then, again <laughs> but like, it took off within do, a year. Do the loop. but then it, yeah it took off within like the first within like within a few months it was like covering expenses which is like i mean i was in sri lanka the all, videos were there were awful i mean i think the main switch happened was because originally I was filming on a Canon G7X, um, which is like super, like not wide lens. So I filmed some videos there in Sri Lanka with that. I filmed like two videos in Thailand. Like these are just awful videos. These are the first videos I've filmed. So they're going to be terrible. Um, and I went to India and also filmed some with the G7X. But then it was like when I switched, I was, I was in the Himalayas and then I went down to the very south of the beaches of, in like Kerala or Goa. And that's when I started using the GoPro 
and then like as soon as I started using the GoPro, whether it was the GoPro and actually creating decent content and also like the switch of going into like South India, then just like things started popping off randomly. Like I don't I didn't even know how it happened. Like I just So you don't think Actually no, no, there there was one video of like me going to like a fire station and like meeting the um the local like fire um what are they called fire office <laughs> like fire fire, firefighters <laughs> firefighters yeah. <laughs> yeah that was that was so, one that popped off <laughs> so you you don't think like you didn't feel yourself like improving like there was no like linear graph of like okay i'm getting better at this and more people are watching it was just like randomly you got a camera and went to a new place and then people were interested in it no i, I think i mean god this is like five or six years ago my memory like i remember it vivid uh only only partially I'd getting say, old, like, Luke. obviously getting, yeah, I'm getting dementia. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'd say, I mean, obviously, like, the more you sp- the more time you spend in front of a camera, the better you're going to get, the better you're able to speak, the little things that you pick up. Um, but I think it was that, like, a combination of going to, like, the wide, wide lens. I think it was actually, because what I used to do with when I was filming on a Canon is I'd make it, like, super fast edits, like, similar to what Logan Paul was doing in, like, 2018, mm-hmm. and... I'd cut out like every arm and every butt and have like no kind of like space in between each sentences. But when I switched to the GoPro, I think I just like let it like go more raw. I think I'd just do like one take videos sometimes. And I think people just enjoyed that style a lot more and could actually mm. like understand it rather than whoa, 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 that mm-hmm. kind of thing. So I think it was Why like did... a full style change. Was it, so it was like an intentional stylistic change or was it just like something about the GoPro made you want it to feel like, like a live stream almost. I think like, I mean, I also got inspired very early on by Harold and Bald and Bankrupt and they were doing similar stuff, not with a GoPro, but similar raw kind mm-hmm. of style. So it obviously worked. Uh, I guess it was an intentional change. I didn't think it would, I don't know. I think I was like, Oh, I have a GoPro I'll film with this, see what's going on. Yeah. Easy enough. Damn. You, you fucking took off so fast. Cause I feel like, uh, I mean, with me, it took me several years, but with, with you, it was like less than six months or something, right? So mm. what the fuck? Maybe it was where you were, right? Like, because I think India, something about India, like they say, even like shit videos will get a bunch of views in India. But I'm not saying you were shit, but I just mean like there's so yeah, many thanks, people there to watch it. I'll, I'll fucking <laughs> leave the Zoom here. <laughs> but I mean, no, that's a testament to how bad my fucking videos were because I was there and dude, I was getting, the India sucks video got like 500 views in a day. So like, what does that say about me? Like, <laughs> you know? No, I, I agree. I think like, especially back in the time, like 2018, like, I mean, I, I don't think you can do it so much now and go to countries like that and create shit videos um but back then i think you know there just weren't as many people doing it so there was a a lot less supply and significantly more demand and and very early on i think like the definitely like when i first blew up like yeah majority of the audience were from like not only just india but from the south like specifically in in one state just because that's all i'd filmed there and obviously they're like interested in seeing their state and their cities um being being visited and stuff so Mm -hmm. that that was like my major audience until i eventually traveled to other places wow so like most of your audience is like indians then at that time it was just like that's how you initially oh yeah back then like my my rpm was like 80 cents (laughs) getting third world wages bro (laughs) yeah yeah i mean it it makes sense though it also makes sense with like people i mean visiting any country specifically if you're only visiting one country then those are going to be the people that are most interested in it it's not until you like visit multiple countries that people start following you for like your travel kind of thing it's like Mm -hmm. that's like a a common thing is like you know a bit of diversity get around the globe and and visit different places instead of locking yourself into one into one place unless you want to live there or whatever yeah some people do that some i mean i see some guys that like just have india videos and i'm like Fuck, man. I mean, that's, I mean, yeah, you're getting views, but I mean, like your lifestyle and you're in fucking India. Like, Jesus, you've already lost at that point. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're getting racist, or he was right. <laughs> did you, uh, did you like India? Cause I feel like I watching your videos from like India, Pakistan, and I guess it was from a few years ago, but like you had this kind of like boyish fascination. And I was like, well, maybe it's cause it's just his, just his first place he's going, or maybe he's like genuinely interested in india I, I couldn't 
put my finger on it. You know what I mean? But when I went, I guess I'm a little older and I was just like, no, this is just not for me. But for you, it seemed like you loved it. Yeah. The thing with India is that, and this is what I said when I first visited when I was 18, which it was like one of my first countries. So I was still in that very like, like cool, just like, wow, I'm outside of Australia. Like, this is awesome. But every, like, it's like India is like Europe where like every country in Europe is slightly different, but like a little bit similar. Whereas like India is like every state is different. Like they speak a different language, they eat different food. Like I, like I recently went back to like North India, um, Delhi, your favorite place. Um, <laughs> and, and, the sticking um, dump. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I went there a couple months ago and like, I, I don't think I'll visit that area again because just because yeah. like, I just don't, it's just not a fun place, but like South India, super chill, like beautiful, beautiful beaches incredible incredible like tropical life and then like you have the himalayas and stuff and then you have northeast india which i haven't been to so like you went to and like there's always that like there's always that uh rivalry between like north and south india like Mm. everyone kind of like hates each other kind of thing um but you went to the place where i mean a lot of like the tourists go and where they kind of adapted to, to tourists and there's a lot of scams and, mm. you know, I mean, fucking any like North Indians watching this are probably going to be pissed off that I said <laughs> South India is better. But it's just like, it's much not, it's so much more chill. Like just says it's like, it's honestly like you visit a new country when you go from like Delhi to, I don't know, like any part in the South. It's like just chill. Mm. It's like cleaner. Yeah, yeah, significantly. I mean, there's still parts that are like, like, bad but not like to the level that you're seeing in you know parts of Rajasthan and Delhi and Varanasi yeah it's funny because this is what a lot of Indians told me I I met a dude I started traveling with him in North India his name was Cash and he like took me on his motorcycle to a few different really sweet places in Kolkata but he was from the south and he was like riding his bike around the country and he's like oh no it's I don't even speak the language here like I don't know what the customs are I don't know how to get around like so yeah, I definitely believe you that it's like a different country. I mean, I want to, I want to like India, right? Like, I don't like hating it, but I think if I were to go back, the South would be the move, for sure. Yeah, you know, like the South, the, the beaches are super nice, and you still get that kind of India vibe, but it's just so much more like tropical. Like they have like sick mount, like in Kerala, they have super cool mountains. Like they have like national parks, got wild elephants and stuff like that. Like the Northeast is is super cool. I mean, I think the really cool thing with India is like. It's just like, as I said, it's like all the states like super different from each other. Like the people look different. Like in the south, they're completely different. It's like in the northeast, and then in the northeast, they're completely different to the people in the very north of the country. It's like it's basically like different different countries, but it's just different states. Yeah, I feel like I want to give it another shot, man. I think it has so much to offer, and like, yeah, the mountains, and honestly, I feel like. Uh yeah dude the mountains look sick dude like near yeah. um like the pakistan border what's that uh Kashmir? Mm, yeah Kashmir. have you been up there no uh, but it's always the uh the controversial part yeah that they're which always country fighting is over. it which country is it <laughs> sick so i remember you, when so i you... went to uh when i first went to india is that and i was thinking about this yesterday because i was watching a video on it but um like i got interviewed at the time, this is like 2018, they made some amendment to like Kashmir or something. Some like article got changed to, and it was super like controversial. And I was like, just in this, I was in Chennai, I think. And I was just like at this random like park and like some guy like wanted to interview me about this new article that got introduced. Oh, no. and I, I had oh, no. nothing. I had no idea what I was getting myself <laughs> into. I had no idea about Indian politics. I had no idea about all this Kashmir stuff. I was like 18 years old, like God knows. And I was like, yeah, you know, just I think like it's good. Like as long as everyone's happy, then we're all good. And then like I remember posting that video, or it got clipped up or something, and oh, no. people were like, no, it's not about happiness. Like Kashmir is our land or something like that. I can't even remember what side it was, but man, I got ripped ripped to pieces. Fuck, dude, I, that, can you imagine? That's like a reporter going up to like a Chinese tourist in New York City and being like, Israel or Palestine? Yeah. <laughs> Just such a loaded question. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you cannot answer correctly. <laughs> no. It's like, bro, like, honestly, like, it's an L. 
No matter what. No, yeah, no matter what, for sure. That's the weird thing about South Asia, though, is like, because I was watching your um, your video where you went to the border ceremony of India and Pakistan, which was mm. which was sick. I like seeing you go to the uh, the Pakistan side. It was really pretty interesting compared to the to the Indian side. But you know, people are like taking selfies with you, and they're like, "Oh, do you like Pakistan and stuff?" And I think they're just because you're a white guy, they're just like innately so interested in what you have to say and like i'm not surprised someone came up to you in the park and was just like hey like what's your opinion on and you're like well i am not i'm just i'm just a white guy i have no resume for geopolitics like why are you asking me this weird you know i feel like that would make me so uncomfortable yeah it's gonna get clicks for sure like what would they like i mean it's just funny like i feel like if that's going on the news like what are people gonna see like (laughs) like if they see this on the tv like oh look at this stupid white guy commenting on pol- like Indian <laughs> politic affairs and stuff. Like, of course, they yeah. know it's going to do well. It's just weird. I think um, I'd like to hear what you have to say about, about like, uh, kind of like white privilege in South Asia because it's like fucking rampant, dude. Like, I had some weird experiences in Pakistan where I basically got elevated to the status of these, like, um, religious elders. And I was, like, in some, like, the inner circle with them just because I'm a tourist. It was, like... It made me feel very uncomfortable, but I didn't know if you had like a similar experience of, of um, them just like revering you of be, just because where you're from. Well, I can only share my experience from like based on my like skin color and my stuff. But I mean, like I've always said, like Pakistan's the most hospitable country I've been to. I went for the first time in 2021. It was during COVID, so I think there were a lack of already. Like I mean, Pakistan's pretty popular to visit now not from my videos, but even from people before that. Um, so I think they're getting a lot more tourists visiting. Mm-hmm. So it's not as nostalgic or not as much of a kind of a big thing to, to see tourists there. But when I went in during COVID, especially like in the middle of middle of COVID, like, for, like I didn't, don't think I saw a single tourist there the whole like two months that I was there. So like that was super, you know, people were inviting me for chai. People were, inviting me for this obviously I started posting the videos at the end when I was there and people were inviting me here there and then when I went back the second time I I don't know if this is a clouded experience but because I had a lot of like I was very well known there from my previous videos like a lot of people Mm -hmm. recognized me and stuff like that so like I've not from the two experiences I've had there I don't have the most kind of authentic kind of experience versus you know because like YouTubers you're gonna be gonna be treated differently like just Mm. with the camera you're just treated differently regardless of of who you are but i think um like i don't know like i've seen other people of different nationalities go there and i've had like pretty similar experiences and stuff like Mm. that i think overall they're just like very hospitable like some of the most in the world honestly yeah well i've i said like pakistan is number one and iraq for me was number two. very close very close second they're like so chill Habibi, give me a kiss. <laughs> Dude. <they're... laughs> that was one thing I fucked up badly in Iraq was like... What? I don't know like what the culture was there. Like with kissing on the cheek and stuff like that. And I was only there for like a week or two. So in my... did you not do this? Kiss no, no, no. I mean, like, oh, honestly, shit. this sounds okay. fucked up. Please don't clip this. But a little boy <laughs> kissed me on the street. Like he... I like shook his hand and he came in and kissed me. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. I did not initiate this but <laughs> yeah well that's like what that's what they do is like it's more like a kiss on the cheek or like like i don't i don't even no one even ever explained it to me anyway so i'm just like thinking bros out here kissing so i'm like kissing on the cheek of Hell people yeah. and like just like taxi driver like habibi thank you no <laughs> the taxi drivers <laughs> like like one of my one of my most of our videos is like the bar like this barber that cut my hair in Baghdad and he like did a super good job did like a face mask and everything did my eyebrows and um like I gave him a tip and like dapped him up no <laughs> it's not on the lips but it's like like I, I don't know how like on the but then like I, I, I still like I don't even know I still don't understand it I was just doing it because other people were doing it and but did it I think it's because people did it to me first I'm like fuck what do I do kind of like shit <laughs> well, was it? Did the barber react in any way, or the taxi driver? I feel like the taxi driver. That's it's like I don't <laughs> no, know. Like, <laughs> it seems a bit much. Like, I've, well, I mean, it's just I feel like it's just so common there. Like it's just like how they greet people. 
Weird, you know. Honestly, I don't think anybody kissed me. Maybe I'm uh, not as good looking as you. I don't know. American. <laughs> Be like, frick! I don't want this dirty kiss. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to think back. No, that never happened. But uh, weird. Yeah. So Iraq number two. What would you say is like your number three as far as uh, hospitality? Ooh. Is it like a distant third? Is it like I is like Pakistan, Iraq? Yeah, like definitely I, I've, top I've two. Never, yeah, easily top two. The third I'm having to think about. <clears throat> I would actually agree with you. Um, I think I went to Iraq and I was like, "Wow, nicest people ever." And then I went to Pakistan. I was like, "Even nicer." Somehow it's yeah. possible. Like, yeah. I went there a week. I didn't spend any money. Like they just took care of everything. Yeah. I don't know. I'd say like Middle East somewhere, like Lebanon or something. But not that I had experience. I mean, I was there with a good friend who was showing us around, who we just randomly met on the street. Um, but I mean, it's so like the judgment and like people's experiences are so different. Like people can go to these countries and not yeah. have the same experience. So like if I, if in, in Lebanon, if I didn't meet this random guy on the street, who, you know, like a really close friend, like I probably wouldn't be saying Lebanon, but yeah, mm-hmm. I'd say like Lebanon, but it wasn't to the extent, you know, where pa- in Pakistan, like people are refusing to take your money for lunch or refusing to do this. I mean, also India, like a lot of people, um, in India, when you go out of the tourist spots, like people would pay for you and stuff like that. I guess it evens nice. out for when you're in the tourist spots and you get scammed. But <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Fucking a. How do you think the scamming culture, like, thrives in India? Like, I saw your Pakistan video, your most viewed video, where you get scammed. The horse scam was like painful mm. to watch, dude. Because, like, just seeing the title and the thumbnail and knowing this guy's about to scam you and. It was just, uh, me and my girl watched it together. It was stressful, dude, because you're like, you're giving him the correct amount of money and you're walking away and he's like blocking you. And it's like, is this going to get physical? But you had this like great insight where you're like, yeah, I can't like give him what he wants because he's going to like abuse it and think that just because I'm a tourist, Mm -hmm. he can treat people like that. So I'm like, maybe that happened in India or I don't know, man. I'm not sure how it. Well, that is honestly how I think it happened in India is that it's like, you know, India's had tourists for, for like 50 years, like a century or something. Like they've had decades and decades of tourists. So it's like, it's worked down, you know, to the point where the, when they had their first tourists or whatever, 40 or 50 years, like people like got away with it, with certain things. Because like, I mean, like I'm definitely more likely to give away money to get out of cert- certain situations or something like that in comparison to like a local person. Um, and it just like worked down. It's, and now it is where it is. I'd say I honestly think like that's how it's worked. Like, it's kind of the mindset. Like, oh, we can get away with that. Like, oh, tourists are coming here and they're not as knowledgeable or they don't understand this kind of stuff. Because it like it is very like, and that's the thing I noticed between like India and Pakistan is that because Pakistan there were scams in Pakistan for sure, but because they didn't have so many tourists, like who who are they scamming? Like they don't have extensive scams going on. Like some of the scams going on in India, like it's crazy. Like gem scams. Like you have people chucking who on your on your shoe and then getting their friend to clean the shoe for an extortionate price you have like beggars asking for like rice and stuff and then reselling it to different stores for profit it's like there's some elaborate scams that go on over there jesus i didn't even know about the what they throw shit on your shoe and then they their friend cleans it off yeah, it's, it's like um carl rock i don't know if you know him he's like a kiwi guy like lives in india but he's exposed like a lot of scams there but it's in like the middle of delhi in connaught place like a guy he literally has it on video like the guy has like a a piece of paper or like a tube with shit in it (laughs) and he goes around and like just like squirts it on your shoe and he's like oh you have like bud 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 poo and then like my friend my friend and then he goes to his friend who's just around the corner cleaning shoes and it's like all right i'll clean it for 30 bucks Jesus Christ, man. That seems just mean. Like, it's one thing to, like, inflate the price of a horse ride, right? But another thing to, like, throw shit on you and then... (laughs) Jesus, that's just insulting, dude. Yeah, that's why I was surprised to see that scam happen in Pakistan. Because my experience... I was only there a week, but it just seemed like people were thankful to have you there. They're like, oh, my God, thanks so much Mm -hmm. for coming. Thank You know, you were fucking filming, too, which is the craziest part. Like, yeah, that's this is a thing that I still don't even understand. Like, even recently, I'm like, I don't know if that is not aware or like, I feel like so many people have seen videos on social media of people getting ripped off on camera. Like, I'm not like hiding a camera, I'm very vividly holding it 
in front of you. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I'm surprised that stuff still goes on like that. Yeah, maybe he just didn't care. Maybe he just didn't think there would be consequences. I don't know, because even when you pulled the local guys in, like, hey, can you please help me? He, he like, doubled down. He's like, nah, fuck you. Like, it's, mm. it's 10 times as much as you agreed to. Yeah. So it's like, he just feels like he's invincible or something. I don't know. Dude, the way he was talking to you was fucking stressing me out, dude. Yeah, um, it was, that was an awful, uh, awful situation to be in. I think he, like, from the comments, apparently a lot of people on that beach, uh, like, come, come over from Afghanistan and work there. Um, that's um, what I got from a lot of the comments. It's like people are like, oh, he's not like Pakistan hospitality kind of thing, um, which kind of makes sense. People like go over there to like work and obviously on the beaches there, it's like like camel mafia, they do whatever they want. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. So I, and then I watched your, um, your video where you went to the border ceremony. It seemed like, you know, cause I, I watched your getting scanned in the Pakistan video and I was like, oh fuck, that was terrible. But like, you literally did everything you could have to avoid it. Like you negotiated the price before you got That's on. That's the crazy thing, yeah. Like you didn't do anything wrong, you know what I mean? And then I saw you do, go to the, the border ceremony and then like the guy's painting on your face and you're not even asking him how much it is, or I think you did, but he didn't say. And then, um, I don't know, it just seems like in that part of the world, it's so easy to get, like things happen so fast what are do you have like any tips to avoid scams because it felt like it, your your awareness to it kind of ebbed and flowed it seemed like when you did get scammed you were like really on high alert but then when you didn't get i think you actually gave the guy like more money right you like gave him mm. a fat tip or something but he didn't scam you you were just like oh fuck it like so i'm wondering if you have I like, mean, like tips to, to bro, avoid. like when you when you travel so much that like, you, you just experience so many variations and i feel like not to be like a super hippie lefty, but like there are vibes with like certain people that you get, like when you when you meet them and their first like words words with them, and usually I go by the vibes, bro. Um, yeah, I did. <laughs> and I'll, I'll I'll be I'll be more cautious if necessary. But I feel like yeah, like a lot's going on. Like it happens fast, and you got to process things like super fast. Like it can happen in like in a few seconds, and all that like comes with is like experience, like knowing based on your past experiences, what happened. Um, but in that c- circumstance, uh, circumstance at the border when he was painting my face, like I think I asked just like what the price was. And he says like, as you wish. Um, oh. I think I gave him like a, like 50 cents or a dollar. Like usually it'd be like 10 cents or something. But that's like a common thing, like as you wish, where they, I feel like that's a, like that's a smart way to get more money legitimately just because you know, like they're probably going to get like 10 or 20 rupees for painting face paint. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, any like foreigner, it's like, oh, I can't just give 10 cents or 20 cents. I'm going to give like a dollar or something. So he still got like overpaid, but he was a cool guy. He was nice. Um, But it changes. Yeah, like some people are like super, just, it just, I mean, there's so many variables involved. Depends who's in, who's in the situation, like where you are, how you're feeling on the day, what the actual situation is. Like I've never been scammed for like more than like, like 20 or 30 bucks was there like any like really egregious scam that like stands out other than the the horse thing no that was probably the most vicious one there was one in like in udaipur in india like i went and got like a a custom like airpods case that he made from scratch and then afterwards he was asking for money for like teeth surgery and like eye surgery and he had a disabled son and stuff like that Damn. this is actually this is a funny story after after what happens but i was like hey you know what like this guy's teeth are terrible. Like his toes are broken. His eye, he, he can barely see out of his eyes. His, his son is disabled. Um, like, honestly, like I'll, I'll give him a couple hundred bucks to get this surgery. Even if he doesn't do it, like his family needs it. So I went around to like their house the next day and um, like had chai with them and met their kids and met the daughter and met the wife and met him and gave him money. Um, it was like four hundred dollars. Made a video about it, etc. And then, like when <laughs> the kid, he's like, I think he's like thirteen or fourteen. He's like driving me around in a motorbike. So we leave the house for him to like drop me back off to my hotel. And then, like I walk out of their house, hop on the motorbike, and the kid, like I just gave his father like four hundred or five hundred dollars. And he's like, "Sir, like you give me like two hundred rupees." <laughs> I'm like, "No, oh, bro. Man. Like, bro. Like, what?" 
<laughs> I just gave your dad five Benjamins. And yeah. He asked for 200 rupees. No, my like guy, a, like, I was just like a heartwarming at moment. That point. Yeah, it's like, Jeez. man, well, I know, I know that $400 isn't going to uh, any surgeries. Fuck, anyway, next man. time I'm in Udai, Udai Pool, I'll go back to his shop and see what's going on. Yeah, you fake a limp and then uh, bust out some of your teeth and be like, "Sir, I need the I need the money back. Do yeah, you do you have exactly. it by chance?" Like, <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. It's like those situations. Uh, I'll give the benefit of the doubt to him, and ultimately, like it's going to help him out in that situation. But um, yeah, yeah, probably got scammed there. Yeah, I mean, I so guess I you guess I have been scammed out for a couple hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say like I don't think you can control what they do with it. It's like, because I mean, you seem like a, a great guy. Like you'll go around and like give out money to honest people, but you can't control what they do with it. So, I mean, honestly, respect for giving it to him, but it does, it, it like rips your heart out when you're like, oh man, such a great moment, heartwarming moment. You got it on film. You're like, wow, that was, that was fantastic. And you walk away and he's like, Hey, how about some more? And you're like, what the <laughs> fuck is this, bro? Like, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't even have words. Like it's just disappointing. <laughs> yeah. Or like, um, dude, that shit happens all the time. Even in Atlanta, like we have hom- tons of homeless people in Atlanta, and like you give a homeless guy five bucks, and he's like, "Man, that's all you got? Like, how about a 20? Yeah. I'm like, "Bro, what is this? I'm not an ATM. Like, I'm giving you free yeah. money." Like, <laughs> what about you? Did you get scammed in India or Pakistan when you were there? Well, no, Pakistan, no, because I was like with, I was kind of embedded with families, um, so I was like pretty, pretty much protected from everything. Um, but honestly, I got the feeling I wouldn't be scammed in Lahore. I feel like the people were like so outstanding there that literally I have a whole video where I was trying to spend money. I was like looking for an ATM the whole video and like they wouldn't even show me where the ATM was. They were like, no, 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 come with us. Like, you know, <laughs> um, but no, I mean, other than just like the tuk-tuks, I don't even know if you'd call that a scam, like them inflating the price like 10 times what it's supposed to be. Yeah. Um, but no, I mean... I wouldn't call that quite a scam, but it's just fucking, it's just exhausting. You know what I mean? I feel like there you have to be like on such high alert all the time. 24 seven. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot, dude. I, I don't mind like, like especially like rickshaws and stuff like that. Like I know we're never going to get like the local price in most situations and I don't mind like paying extra, but I just want like want a reasonable price. Like sometimes it's just like outrageous prices. Like, man, like you're joking. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, honestly, like India will really like sharpen you up for like negotiating skills, like mm-hmm. your your ability to walk away. And plus, like, I mean, at least in the north of India, people are so like, it's almost like New York City. They're like, go, 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 like all the time. Like people are cutting yeah. me in line. People are like just such savage negotiators. And I feel like um, it'll like really sharpen your teeth with that stuff. So, I mean, once I left India, it's it's almost like a game. It's like really fun actually to like walk away from negotiations. You're like, no, 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 that's not my price. Like, you know, I'll go to the next guy. Yeah, it's almost <laughs> empowering. You're like, fuck yeah. <laughs> Especially too, because they always use like the guilt tactics. They're like, oh no, like my my fucking son can't walk and uh, fucking look at him. He's so ugly and fucking or like paralyzed. First sale, like first <laughs> sale or something like that. Wait, like, what do you oh, mean? No business. Like morning, like it's like. Have you never heard? Have you never been used it? Where it's like it's like four p.m. in the afternoon. They're like, oh, first customer price, like first customer price. It's like, uh, bro, I just saw like five five women walk out with like twenty bags. <laughs> no. <Nah. laughs> Damn. Yeah. Or like, oh, friend price. Oh, good price for you, my friend. Yeah. It's like, bro, That's what I love about that. Uh, charge me a hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah. That's what I love about calling a broadcast. He'll like completely flip it around on them. They'll be like, friend price, friend price. And then he'll he'll type like a price one tenth of that on the calculator and be like friend price friend price or like <laughs> that's just my favorite dude it's just completely like give him a taste of their own medicine. <laughs> Do you think there's something wrong with like people getting joy out of bargaining in these countries? No, I don't think so, and I think that's like part of the the zeitgeist or like the collective consciousness of like white people on the internet they're like oh well you have all this money like you should just give it away and it's like okay yeah and that's why i like your way that you do it because you're like okay if you're honest i'll fucking Mm. give you a lot of money but if you're ripping me off then you can get fucked you know what i mean like yeah and i think that's i don't know maybe i'm more cynical but i feel like most vendors in the markets are like trying to like take advantage of you or that's how i at least view it so i don't get ripped off um so no, I mean I enjoy it. I think it's like sparring. It's like 
you know, they're trying to rip you off and then you're trying to just get a fair price. So it's like, I don't mm. know. It seems like it evens out. I don't know. What do you think? No, I agree. I think it's fun. Like, I mean, they all, like, I feel like they also have fun with it as well. It's like, a, it's like his, and here's the thing that people that haven't traveled think, especially you Americans, um, <laughs> as in you, Connor, not the other Americans watching. <laughs> okay. I will um, speak for all 300 million of us. <laughs> <laughs> um, is that like whenever, like you're buying like a pair of shoes, they're worth like $5 and you're getting charged $20. Like people think like it's such an absurdity that you're trying to get it down when, anyone else in the country that was doing it like bargaining is such a common thing like so many of my comments people from the actual country that i'm bargaining in are like oh he bargains better than my mother or he he bargains like my grandmother or something like that like you actually get props for doing it because it's part it's just part of life there and it's such a thing like that australians can't even comprehend americans can't comprehend people that haven't left the uk they just can't comprehend that there's another world where you can like negotiate prices like it's just what happens in some countries and it's in some countries you don't do it because it's not the culture. Like I'm not going to a, a market in Australia and bargaining because the prices there are the prices. You're not getting discounts. It's not the way things work there. And same with America. Yeah. I think it's just like, it's this weird, like, well, I think it's the same with the idea of like cultural appropriation where it's like, okay, yeah, I went to Pakistan. I wore the Shavar Kamis, like the uh, traditional, dress and all the Pakistani people are like oh my god it looks amazing like oh great so classy mm. so beautiful but if I wore that you know if a white person or if like a blue haired Antifa girl saw me wear that she'd be like <laughs> uber offended where it's like okay yeah the rules of your country don't apply over here like this is what they wear yeah. like this is what I'm gonna wear you know what I mean it's not that confusing <laughs> I saw yeah, it's a, not a video deep. a while ago of mm. um, some guy walking around as a white guy is wearing I don't even know. What's the Mexican like outfit? The sombrero and what's yeah, the sombrero dress? And, yeah, so know. he was like walking around like New York or something and um, was asking like people like, do you find this offensive? Like white people, or, like people that aren't Mexican. And like, yeah, that's like really offensive. Like, like blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and like he went and asked like all the, the Mexican people and they're like loving it. Like, like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like they're getting like super hyped up. Like they're so excited to see him doing this. They're dancing together. <laughs> I'm like, man, yeah. people just like, put stuff in their own heads just in the perspective of like other people. It's crazy. Well, I mean, I think it's like well-intentioned, right? But it's like, you're still, you're almost like treating them like babies. Like, oh no, no, I'm a, as a white person, I have the authority to like deem this offensive or not offensive. It's like, dude, you have no business. You're not involved in it at all. Like don't have an opinion on it. It's not, it has nothing to do with you. <laughs> you know, you know what the, the really good thing about, I mean, not that I've spent any significant time in the U S or like, in, in like Australia in comparison to like Asia is like everyone just like gets along in like Asia especially in Thailand like there's none of this like attitude where it's like me against you like politics or at least I'm just so unaware of it because I only spent like a month in each country or whatever but you don't have this like this like crap of like oh like you're white or you're black or like you're Asian or whatever it's just like you just get along and like everyone just lives seam- seamlessly what do you think that's about? Like, why do, what do you think they have that we don't? I don't know. They're just not the greatest country in the world. <laughs> <laughs> just comes with the territory. You know, it's a small price yeah. to pay for being the best. <laughs> I, I don't know no. what it is. I, think, I feel like people that are, like, in one spot in any country, like Australia or US, like, they're so consumed by, like, media and politics. And I think that's, like, one of the best things about travel is not having to deal with the news and deal with just seeing signs of lobbying and stuff like that just not like seeing all this like bullshit that no one even cares about i think like that's the best thing or one of the best things about travel is you just go to a place and enjoy it yeah man i mean like i'm fully looking forward to like not thinking about the election when because we're in dc so it's like around us all the time so it's Mm. like such a luxury to leave and like you know you're not involved in politics or sports or anything you're just like completely like you know, it sounds fucking stupid, but like finding yourself, like, are you actually interested enough to like fucking pick up the phone and like read the CNN article? Or if you, if it doesn't find you on its own, are you just going to ignore it? Yeah. You know, which I, I find up, I, I do myself. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's exactly it. Like it just seems to find you when you're in like, especially like in Australia, like I found it, like whenever I'm there, it just finds you, it creeps back into you. And then yeah. all of a sudden you're a, freaking democrat or hardcore republican (laughs) yeah 
Yeah, it's too bad, man. Yeah, but honestly, I, I agree. Like, you know, there's countries like India that are like so fucking diverse or even in Myanmar, dude, Myanmar has a ton of like ethnic groups and like it's not really mm-hmm. well, I guess in Myanmar, Myanmar, it's definitely a thing that I had a fucking genocide there. But like, maybe that's the worst <laughs> possible example I could have used. But like in India, it's like just I don't think people give a fuck. I, I just didn't feel any animosity like between people at all. You know? No, well, I'm, I'm just thinking right now because if, if people are watching this and they're from like a country like India, like that, because I've seen like political rallies, I guarantee like people are deep inside of it. I guess it's just like every country. But I think the switch is like the traveler mindset. It's like, oh, you're only in here for a month. So I don't know if that's like the yeah. main thing, but I guarantee like people are going to like in the comments of this, they're going to be in the comments saying like, I'm in X, Y, Z country and you know, it's like this or it isn't like this. I mean, everyone's experience is going to be like super different, but I know like in India, like the like very patriotic and elections are pretty big there. But mm. obviously I've never, apart from my uh, super reputable comments on Kashmir back in 2018, <laughs> I, I don't have too much of a interest in Indian politics. <laughs> right. That's such an Aussie comment too. Like, oh, mate, let's all just get along. Like, you know, like... <laughs> Just surf or I don't know, <laughs> whatever the fuck you guys do. And now Australia's Australia's pretty messed up as well. Nowhere near as like to the level of America in terms of like politics and division and stuff like that. Uh-huh. Um, but we have our own issues and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, you were mentioning like everyone takes a gap year. I feel like you guys are in such a prime spot for traveling because i mean dude you you could like take a boat and go to fucking papua new guinea like it's right there or like indonesia yeah i only take like three days ah well (laughs) what's three days (laughs) you know you just take us three months i don't i don't don't think too many aussies are going to papua new guinea for holiday (laughs) but i mean i just mean like it's geographically so fucking close to you like there's just such uh it's not it's honestly not though so like like the New Zealand is close, obviously, but that's still like a four hour flight, bro. It's, it's a, like, if you fly five hours from where you are, is there anywhere in America that you'll end up or you're in a different country? Wait, ask that again. Like if you fly five hours from you're in DC, like, uh-huh. is there anywhere in the U S that takes you five hours to fly from where you are? Mm, no, LA, LA it's probably four. Alaska would be like seven, I think. I okay, like it. yeah, so it's about okay. four, four well, like, across theater like, country. Yeah, so if we fly like, like from Sydney, which is on the east coast, to like the west coast, it's like five, five or six hours to fly there. Mm. So it's far. Like, even from like to Bangkok, it's like eight hours. It's like we're like um. we're super far. We're clo- we're like reasonably close to like we're still like one flight away from like Southeast Asia, but it's nowhere. Like I mean, this is a concept that Australians really can't grasp until they go to Europe. Is like. They, they, it's such a weird concept. It's like, oh, like I'm in the UK. I'm just going to like drive to France for the weekend or like go to a different country for like the weekend. Like that's something so foreign to Australians just because, I mean, bro, we have to cross our sea to get to any other country and usually take like a 10 hour flight to get there. Yeah, actually, I didn't think of that because I just view the map and I'm like, oh, fucking, but I guess I'd be looking at like Darwin or like the places people, yeah, nobody Darwin, lives. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, no one lives up there. That's like two hours to Papua New Guinea and stuff. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but I mean, yeah, it's still like pre- it's still like super common, like gap years and stuff. I mean, I feel like just univers like university isn't pushed on us as much as it is in the U.S. Like you, like going to college is big in the U.S. Like mm-hmm. if you don't go to college, you're a dropout. You're a fucking loser. Um, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. and I think like. Yeah, there's just a lot, of, a lot of, like, options in Australia, like, work-wise. Yeah. Like, even, like, like I don't know how it is in the U.S., but, like, laborers and, like, trade... We call them, like, trade tradies or, like, trade persons, like, plumbers or, like, electricians and builders and stuff like that. Like, or, like it's all, like, usually the dropouts that do that, the people that aren't as uh, kind of... What's the word? Like, smart, smart. but, like... <laughs> Like, like typically like, right. uh, like school smart, like English right, right, maths right. kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, they're more like, you know, doing things like building stuff. Like they go to like this, anyone can get into it. You just like three or four years of like studying. And then basically it's like, you get like a, a job in like your first year and you're on like super low wages. But like after like four years, it's pretty difficult to not find a job where you're not on six figures, like just 
cleaning oh, shit out of a toilet or like putting wires together. Yeah, dude, I actually met a lot of people. I met some of my coworkers uh, teaching English in Japan. They were Italian dudes and they worked on farms in Australia. And they said they made like, yeah, mm. like 80, 90, 80 or 90K a year. Like no expenses yeah. either. So, yeah. Um, actually, another guy, now that I'm thinking about it, this guy I worked with in Ireland, older dude, said he would go down there and like he knew how to operate the farming equipment and he made fuck tons of money. Like, and it just, just seasonal work, he'd make like 100K. Like in like that's six crazy. months. Yeah, well, that's all people do. They go out on the farms for like two or three months, just grind it out, make like 50 grand and then just travel Ooh. Southeast Asia for like two years and then go back into the middle of nowhere and save up. That's not a bad life, dude. Is that what you were going to do if like the YouTube thing didn't work out? No, I, I would have just like gotten the job back like in Sydney. Just like a boring ass, miserable yeah, was, office job? I was like, yeah. No, I used to be a removalist, like lifting furniture and like what you're about to do in a couple of days when you move oh, out. Jesus. That was my job. Oh, fucking I. Now we're paying people, dude. Fuck that. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll fly over. <laughs> 25 bucks an hour. <laughs> oh my God. Dang, dude. Well, did you, um, I want to, I want to hear like a, like a crazy travel story of yours. I feel like you've got a lot of chops. Do you have anything that like stands out as, uh, I got, I got too many. I think the craziest one was, um. It was in India, like, I'd been to India, and I was, uh, like, left left India to go back home for a little bit, and then I, f- I flew back there, and then I was there with some, like, local friends on my first or second, on my, on my first day, we, like, saw, uh, like, local sites, we went to temples and stuff, and then um, that night we had, like, a be- like, really good dinner, and then the next day we woke up, and it was a festival called Diwali, so, like, Mm. Like, I don't know if you've heard of Diwali, but yeah, yeah. it's like the festival of lights or something. So it was like pretty celebrated around the country. But I was in the South where, it, at least where I was, it was particularly celebrated. But um, yeah, we like, so we like hung out with these local friends there. Also, like, one of them was also a massive YouTuber there. So like went out for the day, like got lunch, whatever, picking up all the fireworks and stuff like that for the evening time. And basically like as soon as like the afternoon hits, you just like fucking light off a ton of fireworks like every ever like in the streets it's going crazy um and long story short stupid i don't even know if you've heard this story but um i like a i had a faulty firecracker mm. it was one of these ones it's it's like nicknamed the abortion in oh, the God. state because apparently it's so loud that it gives women abortions but basically oh, no. it's like <laughs> it's like the size of a it's like the size of a baseball uh and it's pure thing is just to blow up like and make noise so you like light it and you chuck it and just right. you know that's what you're meant to do it's literally so explosives it like, it's like a grenade <laughs> minus the shrapnel <laughs> holy shit um so so i lit it and it like sparkled a tiny bit and then it disappeared and then so i'm like oh shit like it's still not lighting like that you know you like when you light a firework you know when it's like properly lit like it's time to throw it but it did like mm. a tiny sparkle and then disappeared so i'm like trying to light it again and then like five seconds go by and then all of a sudden like it's like at the very end of the thing um and it like i realized this and i was like in the process of throwing it and it blew up in my hand Mm. and now i'm fingerless damn (laughs) shoddy so what uh finger did it so middle 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 finger is completely gone oh shit um and then top of the index finger is gone but the thumb was gnarly like if you see that scar oh, around yeah, there, yeah. like Damn. it was basically hanging off hanging off the back oh. of um like, i don't, oh, I, don't no. honestly, I don't even know how i have a thumb still it's crazy holy shit um, so your hand was just like a stew it was like an abortion <laughs> it, was, it was like right it was like minced meat no I had, I had photos dude. Of it. like you can't put it up on youtube you'll get demonetized or like it'll get under eight uh, over 18 only it's gnarly there's photos on like my instagram and and stuff like that. Yeah, I saw that. Actually, um, that was one of the first videos that popped up of yours. And it was like, and I, I couldn't get through it, dude. Like, I just, I'm so weak to my stomach. Even when you went to the doctor and you were like showing photographs of your hand, I'm just like, please, like, I just, I can't. <laughs> it's so gnarly. Yeah. So that's probably like the craziest one. Um, I don't know. There's so many stories. Like, like, it had a lot of stuff happen in like Lebanon, like up on the border of Syria. Like, I stayed with. Like the kind of like what you did with Pakistan, staying with like, not like mafia, but like very well known people up there who were like operating the weed farms and stuff. And like the mayor, uh, I was like staying at his mansion and stuff, and there's like weed farms everywhere. And 
would go out and shoot like AK forty sevens and um, <laughs> Shit. like that's like, fucking badass. We went, we went to we went. This is the crazy thing: is the day before we actually went to a, a funeral, and like I don't know what it is in Lebanon, but they have an obsession with just shooting guns in the air, especially at funerals. Fuck yeah. It's like we're in the middle of. That's badass. Yeah, you'd, love, you'd love this place, yeah, bro. Let's go, dude. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so like we're we're at this funeral. Like I'm just like with this one guy that I met the day before, who's who's the father of this kid that danced me on Instagram. Um, and he's like taking me to all these like sketchy places that no one would go without a, a, like a local or something. But we end up at this funeral and I'm like, wait, sketchy. How obvious. are they like just terroristy or? <laughs> well, like they're related to the num like the number one most wanted person in, um, <laughs> in Lebanon. And he's also on like the CIA, like Interpol list or something. Um, but it's what? just the area is like well known for, for like him dr- doing what? Like trafficking. A- oh shit. Yeah. Interpol wants Um, him? I think so. Interpol or Whew. like s- some other one. Um, so yeah, they're, anyway, they're crazy, but like we went to this funeral and like, yeah, they have an obsession with the shooting guns. Like in celebration <laughs> of this funeral, there's these guys, they're just like shooting, like, I don't even know what guns they are. They're just like constantly just shooting guns. And then this guy goes out the back, pulls out an RPG, and they're like <gasps> shooting RPGs. No, the, yeah. dude. And I, I, have, I have videos of these guys just in this like field, like outside of this house, shooting RPGs up. They got guns <laughs> just shooting them up there. I'm like, hey, look, I respect bro, that. Hey, we've been doing we've been doing funerals wrong in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! So there's just like random RPGs being shot off in the Lebanese yeah. desert. Yeah. Holy shit, dude! Those are expensive, dude. That's not cheap to like just fire yeah, off around yeah. of that. They're, they're, they're expensive. The, the thing that really made me realize, like, when I was hanging around around these guys, is I already knew they're like pretty big. But like at the time when I was there, there was a huge like fuel crisis in Lebanon. It's so, like people would literally wait like overnight to like line up in these fu- in these like petrol stations to get petrol for everything. And then like when we went up into the mountains, um, I think what's the I can't even remember what the city, um, Bacar Valley is like the known place for like growing opium and weed. But like this family, they're like, we went to like one of like their 10 properties and like we drive in and bro's got a private gas station in the back of his like property. <laughs> Whoa. I'm like, oh man. All right. Yeah. Wow. You guys are, you guys are sorted. That's a serious level of uh, of connectedness. In the middle of a gas crisis, you're like, "Nah, we're good. We we got gas. Like, yeah, we make the nah, gas. We're good. Like, yeah, yeah. Holy shit! How did you get connected with these guys? I got a, I guess got a <clears> DM <throat> on um, Instagram from the kids because I was posting Lebanon videos at the time. It's like obviously you get like some of the people watching, and then his like the son, he's a few years younger than me. He just messaged me. He's like, "Hey, like, um, do you want to go to?" Bacar Valley and I heard a few things about it. It's called Yam. The city's called Yamune. It's like the if you search it up on like uh, YouTube, it's like known for like having like the best hash and the best weed in like Lebanon and stuff like that. Hmm. Um, but he's from that village. And he's like, oh, like yeah, let's go. Like I went up one weekend with the dad, and then the next weekend the kids came up as well. And like yeah, we went like, hunting, shooting AKs. Um, Wait, did he pitch it to you? Like, hey, like we're drug dealers. Like, do you want to come shoot guns? No, no. Us? Like, I, I <clears> honestly, <throat> I don't even know if they're drug dealers. Like, they sure obviously keep everything on the sly. Sure like, yeah. Um, <laughs> but like, <clears throat> he like works up in the government. Like, the father works up in the government. Um, he has like connections to the president and stuff like that. And then the grandfather is the mayor of Yamune. It's like, it's pretty, pretty confusing how it all goes on but they're loaded they got weed growing out everywhere they got ak's they got oh rpgs <clears throat> the crazy thing was like when i was there it was like 20 2022 or something they had a, a brand new 2022 like um toyota uh land cruiser nice. and it had like 25 kilometers on it <laughs> fuck yes <laughs> and it's just like in the garage like super clean super crisp wow whoa dude that's a that's a lot that's a lot yeah so you were you did you post those videos when you were still in lebanon no those videos have never been posted just because um i wasn't able to show 
too much. I didn't want to blur out stuff, so I've just been holding on to them. I mean, I have like a video that I might post though. They called up a barber and we went into like one of the weed farms and smoked shisha while I was getting like a haircut and a shave. Um, I was like just grabbing buds off the Fuck off yeah. the leaves next to me, just popping them on the shisha, ripping the yeah. shisha, <laughs> getting getting the uh, getting the old haircut, getting the shave. Wow, that's legendary. Too hot for YouTube, bro. Got to start yeah. a Patreon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, the thing wow. that screwed me over there was my two friends that were there because they're obviously Lebanese. They can get into a lot more trouble than I can for being there mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and they're like talking to the barber while i'm like i'm filming a video and at the very end they're like oh bro like we can't be in this video and i was like oh <sighs> thanks <laughs> like you could have just sat in the car 20 minutes or oh, 20 meters away and just sat there and i would have filmed this video perfectly fine but you told me I mean, like I at g- the very end i guess you could that video would have gotten posted if it, yeah but then it was like oh like the voices in there and then I have to like zoom in and stuff. It's just like, mm. a, like just not an ideal, ideal, uh, situation. But, uh, yeah. that's another video that never got posted. That is a pain in the ass, right? Like when you film something and then it's, you can tell it's incredible. I mean, the story itself is fucking out of this world. And then uh, to see the video, I feel like would be on another level, but then they're like at the end, they're like, Oh yeah, by the way, I'm just going to throw a grenade figuratively <laughs> in your whole plan. <laughs> like this great video you just filmed is, you know, we just nuked it figuratively. <laughs> yeah. RPGs. <laughs> oh, dude, that's fucked. That happened what, have to you, me before. Have you had, um, yeah, have you had videos get culled? Yeah, I mean, I had one where, like, I was in Turkey and these girls were being kind of flirty with me. And um, then I posted it. And then later they were like, hey, that's really inappropriate. Like, why did you post that? Like, everyone's going to see this. And I was like, what do you mean? Wow. Like you were the one I didn't make you do anything. Like I wasn't, it was just confusing. And I was like, I'm sorry. I mean, I've, you know, call me a dick, but I was like, I'm sorry. The video is going to stay up. Like it's, you did to me, they didn't do anything wrong. And like, if they were uncomfortable being on camera, they should have said something. So I don't know. I feel like kind of an asshole saying it out loud now, but it's like, mm. I don't know. What do you want me to do? Like the, the RPG thing is like understandable. Cause they're like well connected <laughs> And they have like... Well, actually, those guys... I don't even think they... Those guys probably didn't even care. I think I posted that on Instagram. Um, really? Yeah. That's so badass. You don't want to meet it's these more, guys. It's more just like... There were there are a few reasons. Like, the son wanted to go to the US to study. So, you know, can't be linked to terrorism in your, yeah. your great country. Yeah. Um, the father was also, like, pretty high up in... Um, politics so obviously like the reputation is a big thing there he's you know on video doing mm. certain things um so those are like the two main reasons and then i also just didn't want to like screw people over really especially in lebanon where it's a little bit lawless damn dude yeah i mean it sounds like you're like actually thinking about the people in your videos which is nice i feel like you're a very nice guy <laughs> well, i have gotten two people in jail but uh what <laughs> What are you, you talking don't know about? The, no, no, no. The, the the Pakistan horse guy ended up getting arrested. In no way. In jail for like 12 hours. Oh, no. This poor Afghani immigrant is like trying to make a buck. Yeah. Well, <laughs> He's get deported like back to off. Afghanistan. <laughs> yeah. Um, Holy shit. That was a pretty crazy period of my life because me and my friend Dale, Philip, we were in Pakistan at the same time and... We like we spoke speaking on and off like every couple of days, and I told him like I filmed this incredible like this this thing like happened like craziest video ever like it's gonna go insane, and then that was like a few days after it happened, and he told me, bro, I was there yesterday, and the same thing happened to me. It's like we're holding on to this content for like six months because our content is like very delayed, and then I I ended up just posting it at first just because that's how my videos were working out, and then he ended up posting it basically a week later. It's like I had the initial virality of it all pop me off just because of the video and he had the virality of it because it had just happened the week before but so many people were saying oh you just went there because luke demand went there and got scammed um right. but like basically when his video went live then my video like obviously got a massive boost as well and basically every video that was on that beach got a boost and we figured out that everyone basically had a video of getting scammed on that beach <laughs> Oh my god! Um, so people are just going there left and right, getting scammed. Even before like the the main videos, just because they can get there, like they can get away with it. They're little, um, little opportunists. 
Mm-hmm. But um, yeah. Anyway, like when I and that the guy that Dale filmed as well, he also got put in jail periodically. Um, Jesus, I feel like Pakistan's bro. very good with uh, um, dealing with foreign experiences and obviously maintaining. You know, they have a kind of bad reputation online, mm-hmm. so they're obviously trying to do the best thing to fix that. But I think one thing that they do well is like when something does happen in a negative favor to a foreigner that is like actually not a nice thing then they take action on it and you know i don't know what actually happens i think they just do it. they get photos and stuff and make him apologize and stuff like that but mm. yeah you know, they they actually do something about it yeah or they behead him either one you know yeah, either one's fine yeah. <laughs> god damn i wonder where that kid is now i wonder if he's like scamming people on a beach in india now <laughs> <laughs> They will, um, people, he, like, he, he started, they were, like, because there were memes, like, afterwards, like, people would go up to him and, because he was asking for, like, 3,000, but he was saying it, like, 3,000, so people would go up to him, like, 3,000, 3,000, and kind of, like, mocking him and making videos of him and stuff like that, and then there was, like, a report saying that he dropped his prices to, like, 100 rupees. (laughs) Oh, wow. (laughs) He's become infamous on the beach, yeah. I mean, I guess, honestly, if if he was scamming that many people, it's probably good the authorities did something. Because, I mean, that just seems criminal, dude. I mean, he was, like, physically detaining you. You know what I mean? That was Mm. the scary part, was he was like, no, no, you can't leave. And then you're, like, throwing the money on the ground. I love that. That was baller shit. It was like, hey, bitch, make it rain. Hundreds. (laughs) (laughs) I just haven't been in, like, a situation like that. Like, you know, people have been asking for money, but no one ever gets, like, super aggressive with it. Yeah, I mean, the only thing, yeah, it kind of happened to me in Myanmar before, but they just kids like bothering you. Dude, one time I was actually in India. God, we keep talking about India. It's like such a, <laughs> people are going to think I'm such a stand for India, but <laughs> so many interesting things happened there. But this kid came up, was asking for money and then he like popped me in the balls. He like smacked <laughs> me in the nutsack and then like ran away and they all laughed. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. Those little fuckers, dude. I feel like they go through your pockets. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That was in uh, Varanasi, which I, I fucking hated it. But yeah, I've, never, I've never like, been to Varanasi, but uh, yeah, it don't looks go, like dude. a bit of a trashy place. Don't go, man. I mean, th- but the thing is, like, all the Indians are like, oh, you just went to North India. Like, you need to listen to Indians fucking um, uh, recommendations. And I was like, they told me to go to Varanasi. Like, I was, fo- I was literally taking the local recommendation. And they think this is a... Mm. Whatever. I could do a whole rant, but... <laughs> It's like, you think this is a nice place? Like, you think, oh, whatever, whatever. <laughs> Enough about India. That's <laughs> <laughs> it, move on. So um, you you have like two kind of lanes you occupy in YouTube. You do like the the raw kind of like crazy stuff where you like jump out of a plane or like do a little fucking, uh, what was that little nano plane or whatever in Nepal or you'll yeah, like. Yeah, ultralight. Yeah, or you'll like haggle in India. And it seems like. You have that, and then you also have, like, the ultra-luxury, like, I watched that, like, what, $1,000 hotel in Malaysia with your mm. girlfriend, and I feel like you do, like, the the makeover videos and stuff, and I feel like, um, yeah, it's just interesting seeing your, like, progression. Do you feel like, did it start with you, like, in one camp, and then you, like, slowly branched out, or is it, like, is it scary to, like, jump back and forth? I think the only thing that's changed out of those videos, like, those videos seem to be pretty common around all of the um countries that i I film in the only thing that's changed is since i started making money on youtube that the luxury thing started coming in like i was Mm -hmm. always doing shaves i was always doing food i was always doing you know just like adventurous stuff um but yeah and i also think that you know like after you create content for a few years you kind of figure out what like is entertaining what people actually want to see like they don't want to see boring videos they want to see like things experiences that they can't have you know not everyone can stay at a one thousand dollar hotel at the ritz carlton like so Mm -hmm. that's a pretty interesting experience not everyone is willing to go into an ultralight in the skies of nepal um so that's a pretty interesting thing to document Mm -hmm. um so i just think i do what like interests me what also interests other people that are watching um Mm -hmm. and it's kind of evolved into like you know getting shaves eating food doing cool stuff, interesting hotels, meeting cool people. And that's kind of like mm-hmm. the kind of basis of everything. But did you, were you, did you have like a fear of like alienating people where it's like, okay, now I'm making money and I can afford nice things. Did you ever feel like 
if I built my audience around these like sketchy, like Pakistan videos or whatever, that they wouldn't appreciate like seeing me ball out. You know what I mean? No, like I never thought of it like that. I mean, the whole time I just thought about it, like I'm just here sharing my experience. Like if you want to see it, like you can. Um, it was never like, I think I have like a wide enough like niche where I'm not like, like I'm just like a travel vlogger at the end of the day. Like I just do, I mean, like it's just like I eat food, I do cool stuff and I stay in accommodation like and get street shaves. Like if you enjoy that shit, watch. Um, and it hasn't really progressed from that. Like there's been the old just random video that probably doesn't really align with any of those things. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Mm. Do you find yourself wanting to like branch out or try different things or do you feel like pretty comfortable with like where you're at? I mean, well, I've, I've been doing this for like five, well, like five years, like traveling. I think you would nat- naturally progress to wanting different things in life. Like not everyone's going to stay in the same career. For life so i found definitely in like the past like six to 12 months just wanting a little bit more stability like um one thing when you're traveling constantly is like your health isn't optimized you know poor sleep yeah. you're not as fit you're not eating as well and i've kind of like come to the realization as like like the kind of for me at least the things that i've obviously focused on is you know creating content being healthy eating well sleeping well being active hanging around with good people and just doing cool things. So I'm trying to like get a more variety of those where previously, you know, like I'd be going to like crazy places, even if I wasn't like, what, like if I was feeling like sick or something, I'd still go out and do it. Mm. Whereas now I have like a little bit of more of a prior priorities because I'm well established, you know, when you're in the early years of kind of grinding to make it, you're more willing to kind of focus more on the business or focus more on the content. Now I'm kind of in the back end of a little bit more, luxury where I have the cho- where where I have the choice of deciding what I want to do and for now like it's just kind of like getting fit again um eating healthily and yeah focusing on that mostly right so it's like less like sacrificing yourself just to make a video and it's like it sounds like you're more focused on like quality of life now yeah exactly I mean I think like the goal like when I first started out was just to like be able to travel make enough money to travel and just live an interesting life while also being healthy. Like being healthy is probably like the main thing. Like if you have millions and millions of dollars, if you're not healthy and you're not able to walk up a set of stairs, like what what's the point to it? And I like had that realization, like even like recently, it's like I was making like a million dollars a month, which I'm freaking nowhere near that. But like I'd probably be doing things that I'd be doing right now. I'd just be s- sleeping in a nice place, working out, eating good food and hanging around with cool people. And making videos like it's like the same thing for me at least for the moment whether i'm mm-hmm. making this much or like making a, a ton of money that's actually nice to hear that you're like prioritizing like the longevity of it instead of like because i mean i'm in a unique situation where like i filmed all this stuff and then i kind of built a, an audience and now i'm about to go out traveling again and it's like i do kind of fear that like you know it sounds fucked up to even say it out loud but when i like prioritize like just chilling or like taking care of myself or like taking it easy and not doing the craziest fucking shit I can think of that. Like they'll almost not fuck with the content anymore. It's like, cause I mean, I see your hotel videos were, and it looks great. And I, I watch it all the way through and it's like, I kind of wonder if I could even pull that off or it's like, um, I, I just don't know, man. It's, it's like something I worry about. Cause like my lifestyle has kind of changed mm. and now I'm like, Oh, are they going to fuck with this or not? You know what I mean? Like, no, but you're funny though. You could like make a video on fucking eating mm. rice and people would watch it. <laughs> yeah, I hope. I um, hope so. <laughs> that's but good. You're, though, that's... you're also like still, you're still super early on. Like you only blew up like recently. Mm-hmm. Like you got the, um, you still got the, the grind in you. Yeah, yeah, I guess. I think like so. people I mean... are still gonna, people are still gonna watch. Like I think just people watch you because you're funny. Like people are watching this because they enjoy you asking questions or, or talking. Like yeah, even like I, I watched briefly the uh, I think the video of you and your girlfriend in in DC where she surprised you with some or oh, the van when you went mm. like cooking and stuff like that like that's, yeah. that was on the pod that was on the podcast channel right yeah like that was still a good video but that was like so random like you in a van cooking yeah. eggs and <laughs> bacon like like and people are still watching it's like you can obviously like you know you may not get like 
the amount of views that you'll get doing the crazy stuff in like Myanmar and stuff like that. But mm. I mean, the, the hard switch is like once you get a lot of views and you make a lot of money is then like transitioning where you can focus on like more health and like not look at the views and the money that's coming in. It's a hard like loop to break out of. And even I'm still like working on like not focusing so much on, like I haven't posted on YouTube in like two or three months. Um, like it's kind of, uh, it's like a, it's like a, ga- a dangerous game that people enter like when you get kind of fame on social media because, you know, views and making money is like a big part of it. And mm-hmm. it's kind of depressing when it goes down, you know? Yeah, well, it's almost like it turns into like a weird popularity contest where it's like even you could be doing really well and like saving enough money each month but something in you is like oh like and it's those fucking graphs dude like the like the income graph or whatever on youtube it's like so <laughs> tilted in one side of like you fucking broke bastard like go make a video <laughs> like <laughs> yeah well you lost 200 yeah. subs pussy yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's tough, dude. No, it's good to hear that you're like transitioning into like a more like longevity mindset too. And I think, I mean, where do you see yourself in like five years? Are you still going to be like, I mean, you obviously slow down on YouTube. Do you think you're going to slow down more or like transition to something else? Man, five years is a long time. Like if I was to look back five years now, I was basically like starting travel Mm -hmm. videos. Mm -hmm. I know it's hard for you young. I don't know, like honestly, and this is... This is where it is, like, where I had the mind sh- mindset shift is, like, you know, in five years, I'd probably be doing a similar thing to what I'm doing now. It's just, like, enjoying different places, spending time with friends and family, eating healthy, being fit, um, and just focusing more on lifestyle. You know, I'm in, like, a fortunate position now where I'm not too focused about making money. Like, mm-hmm. I, I had, like, a, a set goal of what I, what I wanted to reach, and I'm now able to... You know, live by my means and basically for like living this lifestyle forever without really doing much um so yeah i guess like i'll have like flows and sometimes i'll be passionate about certain things and i'll be passionate about different things and i think it will just change over time just as your interests change mm-hmm. so do you think it'll still be like i guess you'd keep the channel and just upload as you see fit like just oh something cool happened i want to share it yeah. instead of like you have like deadlines and it's like a business yeah yeah exactly i'd uh yeah for sure would still keep the channel like i don't know i mean like you know the audience obviously that built there like they obviously deserve videos like i'm not going to completely betray them um and i have videos that just need to be edited at the moment um so yeah i think i'll just do like what that what they enjoy but then also high have the hybrid of you know, going to places that i enjoy visiting yeah do you edit your own videos or you have an editor right yeah, I have a editor that does the YouTube videos. I still like check over the uh, the YouTube video just to make sure mm-hmm. I'm not going to get cancelled when it gets uploaded. But, uh, <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. An N word slip. What do you in do? There, do you edit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a big issue with me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I edit everything except for shorts. Um, I used to edit shorts. Actually, that's what I started with, um, or that's how I got kind of got my chops editing and stuff. But nah, man, it's just not for me. It's like such a low vibration old activity to sound like a fucking hippie. It just, I'm just like, what are people going to click on? And what engagement, engagement, engagement. And I found myself doing that. And I was like, actually it's when I stopped editing shorts that my YouTube channel did really well. So I was like, Hey, I think I'm, I think I'm onto something here. Um, but I mean, editing shorts isn't that tough. Like I feel like you could just outsource it pretty easy. And then yeah, exactly. something about the long form, like the formula. Yeah. But something about long form, it's just, I don't know, it's just so hard for me to let go. Like, I just, I want full control. But you, I was watching one where you were in uh, Pakistan, and you're like, oh, I was, I was editing a video. Like, you were uh, in this luxury hotel, which looks sick, by the way. If that's still open, I definitely want to go there. The one in uh, Hunza, one? in the mountains. Oh, yeah, it's sick, yeah. Yeah. Um, but you're like, oh, yeah, I was just editing a video, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, that's funny. So I guess you used to, like, edit everything back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back then, um, I mean, well, honestly, like the the YouTube videos is what I held on to for a while. It's when I like I hired my first editor to focus on Facebook videos and short form content. Um, so she was doing that, and then eventually, it's just like, oh well, like my YouTube videos are pretty simple. It's pretty hard to to mess up. So she eventually transitioned to that. Um, but yeah, mm-hmm. still like very early on, like I was still editing my YouTube videos. Like it wasn't. 
maybe it was like a like six months probably after that video was released because I remember it was like Egypt when I my Egypt series which was like I went Pakistan Kyrgyzstan Egypt it was mm. Egypt when I started like outsourcing the the YouTube videos as well because mm. I just I'm... find like especially with YouTube like if if it doesn't get done like I don't know I I don't I don't enjoy editing the YouTube videos I think it's pretty like brainless just because it's so simple and it's just like me re-watching a video like I don't particularly enjoy it too much and I never mm. really did um but I enjoy like doing other things I mean like when you were saying you don't like the creating a short form content like I, I love that stuff like I love the like kind of the angles and the hooks that you can use to keep people in with like short form content and thinking about that and thinking about the outcomes and stuff like that I I enjoy that a lot so you still do you do that at all ever still or is no 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 I, 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 I don't do that it's all uh, out i've never created like a facebook video or short form like tiktok or anything in my life oh so you you mean like just the creative control of like hey editor do this like you, yeah like you when it, like she's like she's you know, she's been doing it for a few years now so she's pretty on point but it's, it's like something when i like rewatch it i definitely i rewatch every video before i post it just to make sure there's not any caption errors or anything like that, or there could be a better hook or a better piece of content that could be used. Um, mm. I, I, I enjoy that process. So you also, um, that Malaysian video where you stay in the Ritz Carlton, your girlfriend was mm. in it. Yeah. Do you find it like challenging filming with another person? Like especially a girlfriend? Yeah, I hate it. Um, mm. I hate filming with other people. I just feel like it's, it's more difficult. I feel like my interactions alone are much better because you get to speak to people <clears throat> and you're not as, you know, like if, if we were walking down the street, obviously the conversation would be between me and you. But if yeah. I'm walking down the street by myself, I'm conversing with the environment around me. So um, I think hotel videos, are, I mean, if any videos, hotel videos are probably the easiest ones to do with people because there actually aren't many people to speak to at a hotel. Um, mm -hmm. so those are actually the situations where it's probably like better to, to film with somebody, but usually like I right, still so like filming the same content as other people. Yeah, exactly. So did you, I, I, cause I tried to find like another video of y'all together on your channel, but I couldn't find one. Is there another, is there anything else you filmed? No, we together? like, we keep things separate. Like honestly, like I'm so like, I don't like talking about relationships or private stuff. I just like, I don't want this stuff on like social media kind of thing. I prefer just like we're just each our own person like if people want to watch our videos watch our videos people want to watch my videos watch my videos um i just like yeah. keeping stuff like there's no reason to mention it like, i don't like it's private relationship stuff i just don't want people really having a say like it just shouldn't yeah. be on kind of social media kind of thing you know yeah that's fair i guess anytime i upload a video with me and my girl it's always like a risk right or it's like I just don't really want to be involved in the comments, especially on those videos yeah. where it's like, yeah, I don't really care what you have to say <laughs> about exactly. that. You know, like Luke <laughs> from the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel, just turn the comments off, you know? <laughs> yeah, honestly, that would have been a good move. Yeah. Three sure. years ago to do it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I have a couple of questions. I think that might be. Oh, I wanted to ask. Does doing does your videos doing well in a country like influence you to go back? Like because your most popular videos seem to be all from Pakistan. So you feel do you feel like a a draw to go back there all the time or? Yeah, of course. I mean, like people love me there. People love the content there. Um, but I haven't gone back nearly as much as I would like. I honestly do like the country, like the hospitality, the people there are super, super beautiful. Um, but I haven't been back for like almost three, like two and a half or three years. Mm. Uh, so I definitely would want to visit again and do more things I mean I think it's also like I was saying before is you kind of fall into the trap of going to places where you know the content will do well so I also don't want to fall into that trap um, but you know like I haven't been there for like two years it'd be good to visit again and see what's going on mm -hmm. um, but yeah like I mean obviously that's something in my mind whenever I'm visiting any country. Like I don't particularly have any interest in like Eastern Europe, for example, and I know the content there for me probably wouldn't do too well. Um, so for you, I like- I don't really have any interest in it. Right, so the priority for you is like what you want to do. It's like you're the most interesting yeah. place for you. Yeah, exactly. Cause I feel like if you're, if you're not interested like in it, 
then you're going to like not do a good job in showing it or having, you know, experiences. Like, I don't like filming in like typical kind of like mainstream places like Europe. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Personally, it's not that I've actually visited much of Europe, but it just doesn't interest me. Like, it doesn't, like, get me excited versus, like, you know, going to, like, Vietnam or something or, like, Laos mm-hmm. or Cambodia. Like, I'm, like, thinking now, like, oh, that'd be sick. Like, that'd be some really cool things there to do. Like, that gets me excited about it. Yeah. There's something about you being in a situation where it's, like, completely out of your comfort zone that, like, makes you just, like, oh, what the fuck is in this stew? Oh, like, why do they eat that? Like, it's just, it, like... It's just way more stimulating than like going to a fucking shopping mall in Bosnia and be like, okay, yeah, it's, yeah, it's no big deal. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love those Bosnian shopping malls. <laughs> classic, classic YouTube content. <laughs> uh, they do really well on YouTube. Uh, I wanted to ask. Exciting. I wanted to ask you. Um, do you know much about Rumble? Like, are, have you like fucked with the idea of like putting stuff on on Rumble? Yeah, I think if you go on Rumble, there might be a few of my videos that I posted up there. Because when it first started coming out, I was kind of more on like a distributing stage where I was posting on like all platforms a lot of the time. Mm. Um, but I never went ahead with it. Just, God, it would have been like a year or two that I experimented with it. But uh, no, I'm not too familiar. With what did it you now. post on there? Like, how did you choose? You just like fucking whatever you're posting on YouTube, you just put been, it in. Yeah, it could have been my best YouTube videos or maybe it was like Facebook clips or something like that. Mm. I feel like Rumble, not that I have much of an experience with it, but I feel like the audience there, if you post countries that I have been visiting, there will be some pretty awful comments in those (laughs) comment sections. If people thought YouTube was bad, I'm pretty sure Rumble will be even worse. Because even like Twitter, X, like I've been experimenting there a little bit with content. And man, like on both sides, it's just all politics like on both sides of the spectrum it's just like mm. an infestation of just toxicity yeah like it's awful and like on twitter like i've gone viral like a few times just from other people stealing my clips and it's always in a negative association it's never like a positive thing that's yeah. happened oh jeez. <laughs> it's like a breeding ground for that's tough dude. toxicity yeah yikes yeah i mean because uh, i think you can monetize right away on rumble though right like uh, some somebody messaged me from Rumble. That's why I'm asking. They're like, oh, oh wow. you know, you could still post on YouTube and everything, and like we'll pay you on Rumble. And I was like, I mean, yeah, money talks. Like, why not? You know? Yeah, that, yeah, that's sick that I reached out to you. Yeah, but I feel like yeah. Rumble's mostly you. Like, it's super American based. Like, mm. not many people know much about it elsewhere. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, I have one more question. Is there any video that you're like really proud of that like didn't perform well, but you know it's like a banger? Mm. The I Lebanon one would have so been fire. Many, I, yeah, I filmed so <laughs> many videos. The, I the the video that actually you mentioned with the ultralight in Nepal, like it has like a hundred like thirty thousand views on YouTube. I thought that was a pretty cool experience, and I don't think anyone has documented it extensively. Um, Mm -hmm. so I thought that was going to do, perform a little bit better. It got like a million views on Facebook. I mean, Mm -hmm. that's a good thing is like if a video perform like a good video, like if I think it's a good video, I have like multiple chances of it going viral on like YouTube or Facebook or TikTok or YouTube shorts or Instagram reels. So usually one of them hits. So there's never really a time Mm -hmm. where it's been like a major disappointment for me. So is YouTube like your general, like gauge for like the success of a video or if like if it flunks on youtube like you're not worried because it like went viral on facebook you know yeah i found like over time youtube has changed dramatically especially in the period that i've been posting where like for me like i was able to like put a bunch of clips together post it on youtube have like some kind of storyline and do pretty well now it's kind of changed to i'd say like i don't know like it's just keeping retention is significantly harder now with all the short form content platforms. So like, I mean, even in the past like few years, my main focus has always been Facebook. Like I have over 4 million followers there. So Facebook has always been the focus for me just because it has the most, most growth. It brings in the most revenue. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously I'm going to focus on that. Uh, That's crazy. So that you think dies. of yourself more of like a Facebook guy than a YouTuber. No, I, no, I, oh, I don't know. I, <laughs> 
Yeah, I don't know. Like YouTube, I mean, YouTube's the goat though. Like, yeah, I mean, here's the sure. thing. Like Facebook has such awful support. You have so many issues with it. Like YouTube, you have like your partner manager, like I have a direct contact there. And I feel like a little bit bad neglecting them, but it's just because they mm. do such a good job that I have to choose the other platforms because if I don't do it, then I'm going to get screwed over in the long run. Mm. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Facebook... Yeah, like I, I do pretty well on, on Facebook. Like videos do pretty well there with my style of content. I'd say, I mean, I just I just say I'm a travel vlogger. Mm. You know, I also have a million followers on TikTok. I'm not definitely not a TikToker. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a dangerous game to that's play. My worst fear. <laughs> <laughs> Your five year plan involves you doing dances on TikTok. I think we're yeah, need to exactly. evaluate. Well, you know, I have, I have friends who are like um, doing well on TikTok, like in the creativity program, like the monetization program, but also like doing lives and making like mm. a ton of money, like 30, That's 40 crazy. grand a month. I just, just wonder from, like what? lives. Yeah. 30 grand a month from lives. What are they showing their tits? Jesus. No, no, they're dudes. Holy shit. That's it's insane. But you just, you just have to wonder like if it's so easy, like easy come, easy go. Right. Like if it's so easy, Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> if it's so easy to like grow that fast on TikTok. I mean, I experienced the same thing. Like I was getting way too many views for like my talent level when I first started TikTok. Like I didn't <laughs> know what I was doing at all. And I was, my first video got like over a thousand views and I was like, what the fuck? I don't even have any followers. Like that's weird. And then I just feel like at the other end of that, like it can fall off so easily. You know what I mean? Like easy come easy go dude like i just don't know how sustainable that is well that yeah that's the issue with tiktok is that like because it's such short attention spans the people that are actually watching the videos they're not like fully invested in you like people that watch like your 30 minute youtube video like they're gonna be a, like a ride or die versus someone that sees like the 20 second short or tiktok that you put up like they're not invested in you so i feel like tr YouTube, uh, tiktok's a great form of like traffic it's you know very realistic to be getting millions of views on videos uh, and then you just got to get that traffic to either like a paid product or a free product or to your YouTube videos mm -hmm. to eventually get them to become like a full-time kind of fan. But a lot of people, mm -hmm. you know, like, like, you know, maybe even you or someone like else I've come across like on TikTok first and then like checked out the YouTube videos. It's kind of like mm -hmm. a natural like funnel with like TikTok being at the top just because it has such high reach and traffic mm -hmm. available. Yeah. Hearing you talk about this shit, you're very much like a businessman with it was it always like this or were you like you know what i mean were you did you put the videos first and then like you just kind of learn the business or was it like i'm gonna get rich on yeah. youtube like from day one no it's the other like you gotta learn first like, i didn't know what i was speaking about five years ago i was learning it but then you know like share little things with certain people and be like oh like this is actually a strategy this actually like works for certain people and it like it like when you hear that though, like it makes sense though, right? Like, you know, TikTok has a lot of traffic. You drive it to other other products mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Like it all kind of like clicks. And then when you've been around it, you know, if you were to study like any degree or anything for like four to five years, like for the past five years, like basically every day I'm waking up and it's like something. I mean, if it's not like multiple hours, but like something throughout the day I'm doing in relation to like social media or YouTube or business in the online game. Mm -hmm. so you kind of just like pick up little things and remember from your like previous experiences yeah well i mean you've done a great job of like compiling everything in like the the school uh what's it called like your little uh online community right that's mm -hmm. what it's called am i am yeah. i explaining travel. it correctly yeah well i have uh i'm a sellout i have a course <laughs> travel creator <laughs> school and i have like a, a free group for people if they would just want the community you can join um and then like if people want kind of like more like one-to-one -one, coaching and stuff like that like the the paid product because and i feel like for me at least when i was very early on starting if i was able to learn from somebody that was like five or six years ahead of me like i'd do it not specifically just in like the travel niche but just in in anything like you can learn a lot from people that are multiple steps ahead of you and i've learned that the information that i've gathered over the past five years of creating content and going viral on social media is pretty valuable to, to other people and it's great to be able to see people doing that as well. So I have that kind of uh, that I'm focusing on a lot more as well, which is why I'm not traveling as much because I'm, I'm focusing more on that side of things. Um, but obviously, if I'm teaching that, then I also have to like continue doing that. So it's still going to be a, like a passion of mine moving forward. Mm. Yeah, and I feel like that's a like a great way to like, if you ever needed to like pivot away from YouTube, 
you would always have that like bank of knowledge and information you could just like sell it i feel like that's more of like a longevity thing where you don't necessarily have to be in front of the camera all, all the time you're just like you have this yeah. bank of information and you can like sell access to it it's really smart well it's even like i mean like seeing like you for example like you probably see like some people's thumbnails on channels that have like a hundred subscribers and even you like you've only been doing this for a few years and you're like man that thumbnail is awful that title is awful you're speaking terribly like this is this is stuff that i know like to like even like some thumbnails people have like so much text in it and you can't it's yeah. like neon green and you can't even see it i'm like bro like what are you doing like anyone that's made videos knows that's not the right way to do the thumbnails. So there's so many like little things that you pick up along the way that like super useful. I mean, those are just like thumbnails, but like Facebook, especially like, you know, I'd like to consider like with 4 million followers, I made hundreds of thousands of dollars on Facebook. I'd be like pretty, you know, like well known to teach that because I faced a lot of issues with Facebook. I've been demonetized. I've faced copyright issues you know when you're changing countries you got to do different kinds of things you got to know how to hook people in and use the right captions and stuff like that there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes that um people that are in the school so far have been like they've killed it on facebook they've started from zero followers and they're at hundreds of thousands of followers and making a full-time income from facebook so um like there's just the stuff that i've learned naturally over the past few years turns out to actually be pretty knowledgeable and yeah. helpful to some people yeah, dude. And I mean, it's great what you've done over there. I really, uh, you know, people should go check it out if they're trying to, to learn the, the ropes from Mr. Luke here. Well, yeah, dude. Awesome. Thanks for sitting down with me, dude. Again, this was, this was a good time. Yeah, what are we at? One hour 43? That's all right. Not so bad. Not so bad. <laughs> Let's go. What's, um, what's your plan? We, I don't know if we were recording when you said, but you're leaving in a few days. What are your plans? Yeah, bro. We're going to the Caribbean going to the Caribbean, getting scuba certified, and then we'll we'll see. Probably Asia. So I'll see your happy ass in Southeast Asia Sick. somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, we'll go to um go to Bangkok, you can find some lady boys. Yes, sir. On me. First rounds on me. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I'll get the next ten. Hell yeah. <laughs>